Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be doing a deep dive into the 12 terabyte Kenhank drive. What you'll see in this video is gameplay footage, information on the emulators and a lot more. I'll try and leave chapters down below if you want to skip to a certain part, but at the end of the video I'll give my overall conclusion on whether you should buy this drive. So let's get into it. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the files on the drive. So let's open the drive. In this section here you can see we have core type R, help FAQs, installation and save data. The first thing we're going to go to is this here, help FAQs and then Windows install files. These are all the files you will need to install in order for the drive to work, especially this font file right here. Hyperspin uses this font file and you will need to install it. If you feel uncomfortable installing files from this drive, just Google the name of these and download them. It's perfectly uh, safe that way. Again, if you feel uncomfortable installing stuff from this drive. Another thing I want to make very clear to people is there's literally hundreds of stores after popping up saying they're Kinhank. That is virtually impossible. There's, there's someone who has their own Kinhank website. There's multiple Kinhank sellers on Amazon, multiple Kinhank sellers on AliExpress. So not all of them are Kinhank. What they're doing is they're getting the, the hard drive, cloning it, and then claiming that they're actually Kinhank. So keep that in mind when you get one of these drives. If we back out here, we're going to open up Core Type R, and now we're going to load the program. All right, so when we open up the drive, or sorry, core.exe, we're presented with this menu. Hyperspin is basically classic arcade games, MAME. On this section here, we have Technopart, which is also Hyperspin, but modern arcade games. Cody is for those that have massive movie uh, kind of media drives and music drives it allows you to import all the information to this program or you can tell the program where the files are and there's many ways online for you to download all the metadata which is basically all the artwork all the footage etc trailers so you can make it kind of like a plex media drive or like a netflix style drive there's many ways to configure cody won't be getting into it in this video there's plenty of youtube videos out there showing you how to configure cody in my opinion it's a waste of time because it's a game drive moving on from that we have launchbox aka big box which i'll get to in a bit in this section here we have play night which is basically pirated pc games this is the section that will set off a lot of people's antiviruses the reason that is is because in order to make these games work without Steam or EA or Battle.net, you use a file known as a crack file. The cracks that are installed in all of these programs set off antiviruses. They call them hack tools. Ultimately, they're basically false positives, meaning they're not really a virus, but your antivirus is going to say, hey, this is a virus. Once your antivirus starts detecting this stuff, it will delete it. It will quarantine it, etc. Once that happens, most of these games won't be playable. These games need those files in order for the games to be played without Steam, etc. Again, in my opinion, this section here is a complete waste of time. It is one terabyte of pirated PC games. Cyberpunk, Elden Ring, etc. A waste of time. So Retrobat is basically very similar to Launchbox in terms of what systems are in it. It's all consoles, just like Launchbox. In fact, I believe all the same consoles are on both of them. Don't worry, they're not duplicate in terms of the games. All the games that work on Launchbox actually run from the folders of Retrobat, meaning my PlayStation 2 games on Launchbox are running from the folder of Retrobat. That's the way he has it configured, so you don't have multiples of the same PlayStation 2 games for Launchbox and Retrobat. I hope I cleared that up, but it's very strange as to why he's put two of these options there. Another thing I want to make clear to people is Retrobat is over a year out of date, 
and LaunchBox is a pirated copy which you cannot update unless you buy the official license. So you're stuck on a really, really outdated version of LaunchBox and a very outdated version of Retrobat, which you can update for free, but it's really strange. Uh, for some people, I've heard they managed to update it. For other people, they didn't. It just wouldn't do anything, which is strange. So yeah, let's get into a bit of gameplay. So here I'm playing Vice City on the PlayStation 2. No issues whatsoever. I just got into the car to drive really fast to see what the game, you know, if it could handle it. Uh, it's, it's pretty easy to be quite honest. Medal of Honor as well, Rising Sun. Fantastic game. I loved Medal of Honor series as a kid. The only thing I had an issue with is the sound in this section was a bit off in terms of me using the fire extinguisher. But other than that, the game was definitely playable. But unfortunately, Uncharted on the PlayStation 3, it's just not playable. It's not playable whatsoever. But keep in mind, this emulator is still being worked on today. And it's kind of a newer emulator compared to the PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 emulators. This is as far as I always got before the game would completely lock up on me. I'm running a 3080 Ti. I have 60 gigabytes of RAM and a 12900K. So I'm pretty good in that area. But again, this emulator is currently being worked on. But I'll get, I'll talk more about the emulators uh, in another section. Moving on, the next game is Metro Last Light. And as you can see in Metro Last Light, the text is not in English, but the language is. So the audio in the game is all set in English. However, the menus and things like that are not in English. I've tried to find a way to change it, but so far, I mean, I'm happy enough with the the audio being in English. And again, the textures just seem slightly off in this emulator. Like I said earlier, it's still being worked on, but there's something just seems off. I'm not too sure exactly what it is. I have ideas, but again, I'll get to it in the emulator section. Here we have Halo 3 on the Xbox 360. And as you can see, gameplay wise, it looks like it's running well. It's locked at 30 FPS, but something seems off. The textures just seem off. There seems to be a lot of black shaders in certain areas, and it's very noticeable in Gears of War 2. Watch Marcus's face and Dom's. Notice the black texture uh, glitching and just this section right now. There's something severely wrong. And I know what it is. And I'll get to it in the emulator section. But this is annoying. Gameplay wise, it's obviously again locked at 30 FPS. But it's working. To a point. So here we have Burnout on the Xbox, the original Xbox. I had no issues on the games I've tested. Again. I haven't tested every single game, but the ones I have tested, I've had no issues. Power Stone on the Dreamcast. For me, the Dreamcast emulation is more or less flawless for the games that I've tested. I love the Sega Dreamcast, amazing console, but the games that I've tested, no issues. Yoshi's Island on the new, or sorry, Yoshi's New Island on the 3DS. No issues in terms of the gameplay on this game. However... In a moment, I will play Tekken. Uh, I think it's called Tekken Prime Edition. You'll notice that there's no kicking and punching audio. So I'm going to be quiet and you will hear that there is no... Well, you won't hear. There is an issue here. So as you heard, there is absolutely no audio when kicking and punching Overall, the emulator for me was fine, bar this game. So here is the DS. Now, I've heard from many people that the DS was an issue. For me, it's working perfectly fine in Retrobat. However, it's not working in the launch box section, even though they're using the exact same emulator. Now, you might be scratching your head saying, how is it working in one and not the other if they use the same emulator? So I'm going to try and simplify it as best as I can. In the program RetroArch, 
the emulator they both use. You can download these config files, that's what I'm going to call them, known as cores. So the DS could have, let's say, six configs, so six cores. And with Retrobat, it will cycle through each core till it finds one that loads the game. So it will test core one and say, the game doesn't load. Let me try core two. Okay, the game loads. I don't need to test the rest. Whereas LaunchBox is just testing core one. So it will say core one. Okay, the game doesn't load. Back out. That's what is going on. So I might make a video down the line showing you how to fix it. But moving on from that, that is the issue with the DS in LaunchBox. So in this section here, I'm going to talk about my personal issues I have with this drive, as well as the emulators. The first thing is Big Box. So for those that don't know, Big Box is a paid for feature from a program called LaunchBox. It's actually called Big Box Mode. That's what it's known as. If I press escape, you will notice down the bottom there that is licensed to Mobile 46 version 13.6. So we have a pirated copy of this software on the drive. Now, many people out there might be saying, so what? What you're not understanding is that this is a piece of software. Just like your PC, just like your PlayStation, your PlayStation games, things need to be updated to fix problems. You cannot update this program on a pirated license. You need to go away and buy an official license to fix it. I made a video showing you how to do it. I'll leave a link in the annotations. But this is a problem for people that are buying this drive not knowing it. They don't know this. They don't know that it's a year plus out of date. And that's probably why you're having issues with LaunchBox. No one's going to play Cyberpunk version 1.0. Remember how much of a disaster that game was on day one? But ever since it was patched slash updated, things got better. The same thing is with this program. You need to patch, you need to update to have the program work better. So this program is a year out of date. So right now I'm in LaunchBox. This is what LaunchBox looks like if you do not pay for the premium feature Big Box, which we were just in. If I go to Tools and I go to Manage and I go to Emulators, I don't have an option to update. In this section here, there should be an arrow right here pointing that I can update the emulator. But because I'm on a pirated license, I cannot connect to LaunchBox's servers in order for me to update all these emulators. And when you don't have updated emulators, you're going to have buggy games, things are not fixed. That is to me a major issue when it comes to the LaunchBox section. So right now I'm looking at the PS3 emulator. Let's say I was going to manually update it. I'm lucky enough to know how to do this. Not everybody does. Keep that in mind when you, someone buys the drive. Not everybody knows how to do this stuff. So let's go to help and check for updates. And as you can see, it is 747 days out of date. In my opinion, there is no excuse for this to be a, even happening on this drive. Maybe that's why Uncharted didn't work for me. The thing needs to be updated. And that's what I was harping on when it came to LaunchBox. Things need to be updated. Sorry there, my software crashed. And obviously I cannot revert the update for the PlayStation emulator. But like I was harping on earlier when it comes to LaunchBox, stuff needs to be patched and updated in order for these games to work. I did it with the 360. I'll make a video down the line showing you how to fix the 360. Since then, Gears of War has worked perfectly for me. So now we're coming to the tail end of the video and I'm going to give my conclusions and overall opinion on this drive and it actually might surprise people. But I love this drive. Even though I've showed its flaws and its issues, I still think it's a absolutely insane drive. It's so well put together. Most of the retro systems are just fine. It's mainly the modern ones and that's not a problem for me. I bought this drive for the retro stuff. Most people do. Most people are buying this to play the Sega Genesis or Sega Mega Drive. They're doing it to play the classics like Atari that they grew up with, the Commodore 64, the TurboGrafx-16. And most of them are just fine. 
And that's what I love about this drive. Opening up a menu, scrolling down, finding a system, opening that up and just scrolling through all the games, watching the bo- looking at the box art, watching the video content. All of it is just simply so well put together in that aspect. And only a fraction of the drive has issues. Most of it is really, really fine. I've been to the MAME section, certain games worked, certain games didn't. This is what happens when you buy a plug and play drive. Not everything is going to work 100% for you. And that's the whole purpose of me making videos, is to show you the areas that work, don't work, and I will make videos showing you how to fix them. I want to thank everybody for watching the video. I want to thank everybody who stayed to the end of the video. And I want to definitely thank the 300 plus people that subscribed to me recently. I actually was stunned. Thank you so much for engaging in my channel. Channel, sorry. <laughs> Thank you so much for engaging in my channel. Thanks so much for commenting. And please, uh, if you want to, like and subscribe. But definitely share this video. Because someone out there might be buying this. Share the video. Let them know beforehand what they could be potentially buying. And like I always say, have a lovely day. Thanks for watching.